There is a struggle going on right now for the heart and soul of the Republican Party. But even as he was dogged by new controversies this week, this was in many ways a good week for Donald Trump, as the most unconventional candidate in modern political history moved one step closer to bringing the Republican establishment together with that populist electorate that helped him win the Republican primaries. But he has a long way to go to change a general election map that is stacked against him and to win the White House in November. If you were watching the news over the last few days, you might think the tide had finally turned against Donald Trump. Tale of the tapes, Donald Trump denying he posed as his own publicist in a telephone interview. Stop asking about Donald Trump's taxes, will ya? <laughs> That's the message from the likely GOP nominee. A new scathing article in the New York Times about his past with women. From those questions about his tax returns. Yes or no, do you believe voters have a right to see your tax returns before they make a final decision? I don't think they do. What is your tax rate? Uh, it's none of your business. To growing confusion over what Trump actually stands for. Look, anything I say right now, I'm not the president. Everything's a suggestion. No matter what you say, it's a suggestion. And then there's that recording unearthed by the Washington Post from the early 1990s. Trump became poor so until he got his divorce. With a Trump spokesman who sounds a heck of a lot like Donald Trump. He's somebody that has a lot of options. And frankly, uh, you know, he gets called by everybody in terms of women. Trump flatly denied it. It doesn't sound like my voice at all. Raising questions once again about his credibility. You think about his female voters already turned off by Trump, the New York Times unloaded a front page expose on his treatment of women. But despite the onslaught, the reality is, after those meetings on Capitol Hill, Trump is finally starting to unify the Republican Party. It was very good. It was very productive. And I can say it was a great first meeting to just start that process. And like the stepdad you didn't like when mom started dating him. Oh, dad. It's sinking in for many of his Republican critics. He's here to stay. Even Senator Lindsey Graham, who said this in December. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. And after a phone call with Trump this week, he's now saying the campaign is over. He won. The insults will stop with me. But House Speaker Paul Ryan still isn't quite sold. Are you endorsing Donald Trump? If you're not, what is holding you back? And do you really have a choice? And it's very important that we don't uh, fake unifying. I don't want us to have a fake unification process here. Republicans like Ryan are concerned about the damage Trump could do to their party. But no one really doubts Ryan will eventually endorse Trump.